Hello, I'm Dr. Benita Rattan. I'm a doctor, but I'm also a cosmetic formulator specifically for skin of color. So today's video is all about how to treat melasma. What is melasma? What makes it worse? What are the classic mistakes that we're making with melasma? Is melasma different in skin of color than for Caucasian skin? And which ingredients we should be combining to give us the most effective results? Plus the reason why whatever you're doing right now probably isn't working. Um, and I think that's a really key part of this video. If that sounds good to you, give me a thumbs up. Let's dive right in. Okay, so first of all, what is melasma? Melasma will show up as brown patches, usually starts on the zygoma area. 80% of melasma starts here and they start as cute little freckles. And that's how mine started. You think, oh, suddenly in your early 20s, you're getting these new uh, little brown dots on your cheekbones and you think this is, um, you know, you don't think anything of it. But actually, this is an early warning sign that your skin is damaged and that you've probably spent the last two decades not protecting your skin and now it's showing up on your face. And the problem is, it's okay when they're cute little dots, but what happens when they amalgamate and form patches? These develop here and then they spread to your forehead area and then the upper lip area. And I found that those who have on the upper lip area are most affected by it. Now, there are no other symptoms, but it can really affect the quality of your life. Now, when it comes to causes, certain people are predisposed to getting melasma. So number one, if you live in an area with a high UV index, i.e. you live in a hot country, then you, you're likely to get melasma earlier. I can tell you from personal experience that with my melasma, even five minutes in the sun, I can feel that my cells are almost tingling and I can feel my melasma getting worse. And I think it's something that if you have melasma, you understand what I'm talking about. If you don't have melasma, this just doesn't uh, make any sense. But our melanocytes are so sensitive to UV that they are stimulated almost immediately. And I remember collecting my kid, uh, my daughter from school about five years ago, and sitting in the car and the sun hitting my face and I just had my normal sunglasses on and I could feel my melasma worsening. I said to my husband, um, I really, I need to buy bigger sunglasses. Something's going to protect half my face. And lo and behold, they didn't exist. I basically wanted anti-melasma sunglasses. And so I decided I was going to go make myself a pair of anti-melasma sunglasses. So I'm going to show it to you now but these weren't for purchase this was just I went to a factory to make one pair for myself and when I explained to them what I wanted um, they did think I was a bit mad because they are so big but when I go on holiday or when I'm driving I feel completely shielded and protected so you can get those from drvsunglasses.com they we have been sold out for months however uh, but we will be restocking soon so keep us eyes open for that or alternatively, just get as as large sunglasses as you can. Now, this is also predominantly um, a condition that happens in in females. So, estrogen plays a large part of the trigger. So, this is why it worsens when you're on the pill, or when you're going through pregnancy, or you're going through menopause. Now, you can also have a genetic predisposition to it. So, if your mum has it or an aunt has it, it's more likely that you're going to have it. It can also be made worse by any products that irritate your skin. And this is really what this whole channel is dedicated to, is to ensuring that you use products that are safe for skin of color. Now, there's some treatments that were designed for pigmentation, but can worsen pigmentation in skin of color. So notably, ablative laser, I wouldn't recommend for skin of color because the side effects are is more hyperpigmentation. The other one is mycodermabrasion is fine, but it will lead to temporary results because you're essentially just taking the top layer of skin away. You're not treating the root cause, which is a hyperactive melanocyte. The same is true for all peels. I would avoid TCA and high percentage glycolic um, acid peels for skin of color because both can lead to PIH, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. And hydroquinone, I know this is the gold standard and the, the most number of clinical studies have been done on hydroquinone, but I'm not a fan of it because of the cases of rebound pigmentation specifically for skin of color. So I would always prefer for a cocktail of tyrosinase inhibitors that don't lead to rebound, rebound pigmentation. <clears throat> There's something about hydroquinone that 
anything that's too harsh or leads to too much inflammation for skin of color will lead to more pigmentation. And hydroquinone seems to give you fantastic results while you're on it, but you have to come off of it after three months. And when you come off of it, pigmentation often comes back worse than when you first started, which is why it's not my favorite choice for skin of color. What you might find, however, is that for skin of color, our melasma it tends to be more resistant than Caucasian skin. And so you might start off with trying uh, products that have one or two tyrosinase inhibitors in them. And I've done lots of videos for you um, on YouTube on that. But often you find that you don't see much reduction with it. And actually you need a good 10 to 12 tyrosinase inhibitors combined together to give you the best results without irritating the skin. And that's where that fine line is for skin of color. There is no line for Caucasian skin. You can literally burn the full top layer of skin away and the skin will grow back more beautifully than before. For us, that will lead to mass hyperpigmentation. And so for us, we do need to be very careful when treating pigmentation for skin of color. I'm going to go through ingredients in a minute, but I'm just going to quickly run through all the other things that you can do that will improve your outcome. Number one, sunscreen every two hours without fail. As I already said, five minutes in direct sunlight without protection is going to worsen your melasma. So if you've been trying to treat your melasma and haven't been reapplying your, your sunscreen every two hours, then expect to see minimal results. So it really is that important. So for me, my criteria criteria for sunscreen would be, of course, SPF 50. Um, I never recommend less than that. Broad spectrum. I, I prefer mineral sunscreen because of zinc oxide, which is anti-inflammatory. Don't forget any form of inflammation can trigger your melanocytes. And so we want to do the exact opposite when it comes to melasma. Um, it's also antimicrobial as well, which helps if you have acne simultaneously. Um, plus it doesn't go into the bloodstream, which is why I tend to prefer mineral over chemical sunscreen. I would look for blue, blue light protection. This is not automatic. You have to look for it as an additional benefit from that sunscreen. It's an additional ingredient that we have to add into it because any form of energy can worsen and trigger your melanocytes. Look for antioxidants that are UV stable. Um, the reason is that antioxidants will mop up those free radicals uh, which damage collagen. So we definitely want antioxidants in them. And I'd also say look for tyrosinase inhibitors that are also UV stable. So they will continue to slow down the rate of melanin production during the day. Not all tyrosinase inhibitors are equal. They've all got different um, efficacy and different irritancy profiles. So you need to find tyrosinase inhibitors that are safe to use during the day. Uh, also make sure the whole product is NAFE safe. So no DNH alcohol, no fragrance, no essential oils. And of course, no white cast. That really is key for skin of color. If there's a white cast, you're probably not going to wear it and then what was the point in the first place so that's important i struggled to find uh this sunscreen on the market which is why i made my own one for you called insinkable which i'm sure you already know by now is your mineral spf 50 with melashield technology to help calm down the melanocyte during the day so it's uv stable i'm wearing it right now under my makeup and you don't see any flashback from it and there's a link below if you want to go and have a look at this on the website called skincare by dr v some of the other things you can do is wear a wide brimmed hat whenever you go outside um, i like a scrunchable one that i can pack into my bag especially if i've got kids and i've got all their snacks and everything else in my bag I like to have one that's just easily foldable and UP50. So you want one that's basically giving you maximum protection. If you can see light rays going through the cap or the hat, then it's not that effective. Make sure your skincare is gentle. You do not want to be causing any inflammation that's going to trigger your melanocyte. You want to look for a fatty moisturizer. The reason is that when your skin dries up, say for example, using retinol, your skin dries up, your skin is going to look darker. The pigmentation is going to look darker because you don't have water molecules separating the layers of skin. So make sure that you use a fatty moisturizer. And I've done a whole video for you on best moisturizers to use when you're trying to treat your dark marks. The next thing I'd say is avoid waxing the face. Again, it's just another form of inflammation. Maybe try dermaplaning instead. Okay, so let's now go through the routine and which are the Dr. V approved uh, products. As you know, none of my videos have ever been sponsored. They will never be sponsored. Everything is evidence-based and I explain it all as we go along. Right, I always say start cheap. So I'd say choose alpha arbutin or niacinamide. I like both of them from the ordinary. Um, or you can use tranexamic acid plus niacinamide. 
I think Good Molecules does a good one and so does Faith Theory. They both combine those two ingredients together. Try this for three months. If you're seeing results, brilliant. You don't need to do anything else. You've got your tyrosinase inhibitors at nighttime. You're wearing your SPF 50 during the day you know, that's good enough. If, however, you're not seeing results with it, then I would upgrade to these ingredients. So you can write these down. Alpha arbutin, sodium ascorbyl phosphate, tetrahexyl decal ascorbate. These are both um, forms of vitamin C. N-acetyl glucosamine, which basically improves penetration of actives into the skin. Kojic dipalmitate. I prefer it to kojic acid because it's less irritating, but just as effective. Licorice root extract, which is a great brightener for skin of color without causing irritation. Burberry extract, retinaldehyde, my favorite, favorite form of vitamin A, causes the least amount of irritation and is the most potent form of vitamin A after retinol. So uh, more potent than retinol, sorry. Also look for retinol palmitate, low percentage retinol. So you want to be looking at less than 0.3% because it's gonna to be too irritating otherwise with everything else. Uh, lactic acid and vitamin E. So these are all my favorite ingredients that you want to use together in order to combat melasma for skin of color. However, this didn't exist. The reason it didn't exist is because when you're a marketer, you basically want to have three hero ingredients that you can say, you know, it has this, this, and this in it. And people remember those three ingredients and can then relay that information to other people. To have, you know, 10, 12 ingredients, active ingredients in a product doesn't make financial sense because no one's going to remember 10 or 12 ingredients to be able to tell somebody else. And so it's almost becomes like the more ingredients you put in there, it's just costing you more and more money, but actually, you know, it's not giving you more and more business. And this is the reason why we didn't have very effective products on the shelf to treat melasma for skin of color, because really we need all of these ingredients together. And this is why, as you know, I already made this for you. This is the Dr. B Facial Pigmentation Kit specifically for skin of color. So this contains 10 tyrosinase inhibitors to tackle every part of the pathway for, for hyperpigmentation treatment. So you can have a look at this and it's available as a two-piece kit and it's available on the link below, which is skincarebydrb.com. But again, this is expensive and you only use this once nothing else has worked. This is your upgrade basically. But I wouldn't say start with this first because it is expensive and I always, always say start cheap. I just wanted to make sure that you had an option to upgrade because what it was was just what was on the shelf and then nothing, you know, or you go and do a professional treatment which will cost you thousands of pounds. There really wasn't anything in between and so I wanted to just make sure you had something that was an offering to you to get you between those two steps. Now, as for the rest of your skincare routine, it's important that you get this right because this could also be a reason that your pigmentation is not improving. So look at your face wash. You want it to be brightening and non-drying, especially if you've got vitamin A in your pigmentation treatment. So I like micellar gel wash from Simple, uh, or if you want one, but it's got no other actives in it, but it is hydrating to the skin. If you want with niacinamide in it and anti-inflammatories, you can try our one, the Dr. Mita Rattan Micellar Gel Wash. So I've got it here. This is the one that I use because I get pigmentation. And so I literally, I made this for my own face. Now, when it comes to your moisturizer, remember I said before, I want you to use a fatty moisturizer. So some of the ones I love are Cetraben or CeraVe. If you are looking for a moisturizer that's got ceramides, peptides in it, licorice root extract, niacinamide, derm stim, which is a collagen stimulator and anti-inflammatories, then you can try our one, which is the CeraPep in an airless pump. This is one of the key things I would say is when you use ceramides, you want to make sure they're in an airless pump because ceramides are unstable. And if you've got oxygen around ceramides, then you don't know how effective it's going to be. So this is the reason why we packaged it specifically in an airless pump. In terms of other mineral sunscreens other than Inzincable, um, we've got Tinted, which is um, SPF 30. There's Color Science, which is SPF 50, and Neutrogena Sheer Zinc. So I like all of those, and you can just pick whichever one you like. Don't forget, I'm in the comment section for one hour at the launch of every single video, so make sure you're here. Make sure you follow me on Instagram, Dr. Mita Rattan, and Skincare by Dr. V, and also on TikTok, Dr. Mita Rattan too. Thank you very much. Bye.